In the prior lecture, I had taught you the the entire meaning of the poem "Rain on the Roof." I told you to write the summary of the uh, stanzas of the poem also. Now, in the prior lectures, in when I taught the earlier poems also, I had discussed with you which literary devices were used to write the poem. Now, this in this particular poem, you have three literary devices which have been used in the poem. So each and every literary device I'll explain with examples, but I'll give you maximum one or two. I would say one. You will have to find out in the rest of the poem which other literary devices examples are there. And under that category, as we were doing earlier, we were writing the notes. And behind that, when you finish off with the summary and the question answers of the poem, at the back you need to write. Which literary device was used? And cite ten examples. That was what was given. Now you will ex cite ex uh, from the uh, poem only, from the po text only. You will write which are the uh, examples of these three literary devices which have been used. Now I will give you the explanation. You will mark for yourselves this in your. You will write the meaning of what's. What are these? How these? What? What do these literary devices? How do these particular literary devices help the poet? And then you will write the examples from your poem so that it sticks in your mind that yes, this particular literary device says, uh, helps the poet in this way. So we begin with the first one, alliteration. Now alliteration has been used by the poet in this poem. Now alliteration is nothing but you use the consonant sound again and again in a verse. Or in the same stanza. Now, what are consonants? Apart from the letters A, E, I, O, U, whichever letters, 21 letters, whichever they are there left in the English alphabet, those are your consonants. Now, consonants have sounds, okay? So, alliteration is the continuous usage of the same sound in the poem. Like in the first verse, it has been written humid, however, her, her, her sound came twice. So that is alliteration literary device. To create the same sound, when you read something of the same sound, it sounds rhythmic to you. So that's the intention of the poet, to use alliteration so that that effect comes in the poem where sounds are the same and it creates a rhythm in your mind. So alliteration is... The usage of the same consonant sound in the verse or in the stanza. So first example what I gave you was humid and hover. Now you have to find out in other verses where alliteration was used and in stanza wise also you can just see now which words you try to find it out from the verse only which verse has got two sounds Consonant sounds same. So that will be the example of alliteration. So alliteration will come either in, it will be more than one. Obviously two or more. Okay. Sometimes it is more than two also. Alliteration can be used more than two, uh, two times also. So that's the meaning of alliteration. Now comes the next one. Anamato Puyam. Now this particular thing is, this particular literary device is, the usage of words which indicate sound. Now when you use the words which indicate sound, it gives them a dramatic effect. Okay? It gives it a dramatic effect and you start imagining about that thing. Now words which indicate sound, that particular literary device would be called as anomatopoeia. Anomatopoeia helps you in this literary skills helps you in creating a drama in your write-up. Like if I say the, the thud of the window or the bang of the door or if I say the mm, creakiness of the door or if I say the patter of the rain. So these are the words which help you in indicating sound and they create a kind of a uh, imaginative effect in your mind about what we are talking. So you will cite examples of this particular literary skill also. Now there comes the last one which has been used 
very uh, clever way of writing. It's a tra transferred epithet. Now, what's a transferred epithet? An adjective has been used for a noun in the poem. But like in actually, like in reality, that particular adjective will not suit that, suit that particular noun. It's actually meant for some other noun. It is actually meant for some other noun. Like, in your third verse of the first stanza, it's given melancholy, melancholy darkness. Now, can darkness in reality be can that darkness in reality be sad I told you the meaning of the word melancholy is sadness can that darkness be sad darkness is the absence of light it can't be sad now actually we are referring to over here the sadness of the people so at the melancholy melancholy word had to be used for the people instead of the people it has been used for the darkness so that's a transferred epithet. Now, you've got one more which I had already discussed about in the prior lectures also. Personification. Personification. Now, what's personification? To actually think a non-living thing to be a living thing and attribute it at its qualities. Now here we had been given examples of personification saying the darkness is sad. As I said no, in the first stanza that this darkness is sad and that's why the raindrops which are falling on the roof are compared are, are, are we thinking because the darkness is sad it's crying and the raindrops we compare it with. Personification had been discussed earlier also. So do write examples of these also again so that it sticks in your mind. So personification I repeat is the non-living thing, considering a non-living thing to be having the attributes of a living thing. Fine? So, so you have these four literary devices used over here. I repeat the alliteration which is the repetition of the consonant sound. The the onomatopoeia words which indicate sound, transferred epithet where an adjective is used for a noun, but in actual in reality has nothing to do with that noun. We refer to some other noun, and personification where a non-living thing is considered to be having the attributes of a living thing. So, dear children, you do what? What do you do? You write these from internet. Find out. The uh, definitions of these literary devices. Cite examples from your uh, poem. You can cite examples from outside also, but first we do justice to your poem. I told you to write the rhyme scheme also for the poem. So that would be the concluding part of the explanation of the rain on the roof. In the next lecture, I will take up again a writing scale. Thank you.